which women in the Bible do you think had the greatest roar? Well, one of my favorite is the woman at the well. Um, you know, she, she went to the well at the you know hottest time of the day. And why did she do that? Well, because, because of things that were going on in her life. She was not living for the Lord. She didn't want to be looked at. She didn't want to be talked about. So she went at the hottest time of the day. And, you know, uh, some might call it coincidence. I, I don't ever call anything coincidence when the Lord is involved. But, you know, he just happened to come to that well at that particular time of day also. And, um, you know, whenever he started talking to her and, and telling her um, about all the things that she had done and, you know, you know, you're really not even living with your husband now, you know, I, I mean, just think about that. You meet somebody for the first time and you're really not supposed to even be talking to them and, and you know, in your culture, but you're talking to them and then, and then they start telling you about what your sins are, you know? And I mean, to me, I would just be like, whoa, who is this person? I mean, you know, and of course she, she wasn't for sure until he told her who he was. And at that moment, whenever she realized that she's talking to Jesus, you know, to the one who can save her, the one that can take this sin away, I mean, she can't be stopped then. She runs as fast as she, she even left her water behind. She runs as fast as she can into town so that she can tell people who she's met and what he has told her. And, you know, we need to go and listen to him. And, we, you know, we need to uh, learn from his lessons. I mean, that was her roar. And her roar was, look, you know, God has told me how, he has told me how to get out of this sinful life. And he has challenged me. And now I want to tell you about it. And that's, that's what our roar is. It's whenever the Lord has saved you out of, of some type of struggle that you have, some type of sinful situation, then whenever, whenever you speak to other people, that's your roar. That's what you're passionate about. And so to me, she's one of my most favorite because at a point when she did not want anybody to see her or talk about her, once the Lord touched her life, she runs back in and she doesn't care who talks about her or who's looking at her scornfully. I mean, all she needs to do is tell what the Lord has done in her life. Lisa, I just love that so much about her roar and she was just passionate because Jesus met her and spoke to her and that passion and that fire just went out to other people. And, you know, just as you ladies were just talking, just sharing about the legacy that you've seen in your family with salvation and just Jesus moving. I know there's so many of our viewers that are watching that that's their heart cry, especially for women when they see their husbands or their children or their grandchildren that are far away from God. What would you speak to that woman watching right now that needs to release that roar over her family to see salvation hit her home like never before? I believe, like myself, uh, you know, we met at four, I was 14, and uh, we, only for a few months there, and the first did we break apart for a little while, because he said I was interfering with his hunting season. So, uh, but when we were back together, and of course, when we had the young marriage and everything like that, I mean, I just, I just never, never thought i i just knew when god gave him to me that it was forever I, just, I was taught by that like that i stayed on and i i just never gave up hope that no matter how I feel acted that god was going to rescue him out of that sinful world and i just never gave up hope and and other people would advise me leave him leave him leave him i mean my family his family everybody at one time, I felt like I was just standing alone. But you know what? I wasn't standing alone. I was never standing alone. God had me. And then so what happened was Phil kicked us out of the house, me and three little boys. And I said, well, I got in the yard and I said, well, you know what? Noted that I didn't leave you. You put us out. So I stood as hard as I could with you. But now, you know, you're just letting Satan take over your life. So we have to go. I couldn't find him. He was a big, tall, you know, man. And, uh, you know, but I just never lost hope that, that this story would end good. 
And it was hard all those months and we were apart. And every day I would just pray for him. And when I'd go to lunch with my girlfriend, I said, now I'm not gonna talk about my problems today. And she said, whatever you wanna talk about, Kay. And I would talk about my problems every day. <laughs> and she would pray for me. And you know, I tell you, to go through the life I look at now, and I said, Phil, you better not ever pull another thing like that. Because I think now at my age, I couldn't make it just because I'm older, much older. But I did know that God had a plan, mm -hmm. and I did wait for him to make it happen. And a lot of times, 10 years is not an easy wait. Right. But I just advise so many women to please hang in. Please try. Yeah. Now we have counseling. We have all this help. Mm -hmm. And back in my age and generation, we didn't have a lot of help. You were pretty much on your own, or sometimes you could talk to a preacher, but you know, we're not as, we weren't open then to tell everything. We were, we kept our problems more in our head and just with us. But now I just feel like we have so many people come to us and they will just, I said, let it fly. Whatever you want to say, we're not begging you. We just want you to clear it and we'll do our best to give you biblical advice. 